The fact that Flight 9 still hasn't launched is a disappointing reality, especially for those of us who were waiting for the flight to take place in the second half of this month. However, the truth is that SpaceX still has several important tasks to complete before the next launch can happen. So what exactly is left to be done? And is there still a chance for a launch this month? Let's explore the answers in today's episode of Great SpaceX. Of course, we're all eagerly anticipating Flight 9, not just because it's another Starship launch, but because it represents SpaceX's renewed commitment to achieving a successful mission following two flights marked by challenges and setbacks. Many launch predictions have been floating around, with some suggesting April 18th, and even my own hopeful estimate, April 20th. But now, it seems clear, those dates may not hold. SpaceX still has a substantial amount of preparation to complete before the next flight window opens. Let's start with the hardware. B-14 recently completed its static fire test, a critical milestone. It's currently undergoing post-test inspections inside Mega Bay 1. These post-fire checks are particularly crucial for the engine system. Despite outwardly positive results from the static fire, there's speculation that B-14 may have experienced issues during the test. SpaceX will need to verify that the engines sustained no damage from the intense firing sequence. One major area of focus will be the igniter system. Problems with engine ignition were confirmed to have affected both B-14 and 15 on previous flights, so ensuring flawless performance here is non-negotiable. Adding to the challenge, many of B-14's Raptor engines are reused components, having already flown in past missions. That makes thorough inspections even more important. Other systems, such as the fuel tanks and grid fins, also require routine evaluations to confirm their mission ready. In addition to these checks, SpaceX must install two more critical systems, hot staging and the flight termination system. Hot staging in particular has drawn attention. While it was officially confirmed as part of the upgrade package for this flight, some have speculated that issues with this system contributed to the separation problems seen in earlier missions. The clamp mechanism used for stacking also caused a last-minute cancellation previously, another factor SpaceX must address before moving forward. These systems are vital to stage separation and mid-flight control, so any potential flaws must be eliminated. Meanwhile, over at Megabay 2, S-35, which will pair with B-14 for flight, flight 9, is also progressing, but a bit more slowly than expected. On the 13th of April, SpaceX delivered and likely completed the installation of its Raptor engines. Its next milestone will be the static fire test. However, there's been a notable delay in its timeline. S-35 returned from Massey's test site following cryogenic testing back on the 13th of February, so it has taken about a month just to reach the engine installation stage. All signs point to SpaceX still needing a significant amount of time before both stages are ready for integration. While a late April launch seems increasingly unlikely, the progress we're seeing shows clear intent and dedication to getting it right. And after this recent progress, S-35 still has a significant checklist to work through before it's ready for launch. The next crucial milestone is the static fire test. Given the engine anomalies and systemic issues observed in the last two flights, this test will likely be conducted in multiple phases. Each phase could vary in duration, thrust level, and fuel load to simulate different flight conditions and stress points. These variations are essential not just to verify baseline performance, but to identify any latent issues with push the vehicle toward its operational limits in a controlled setting. Once the static fire test concludes, S-35 will return to Megabay 2 for post-test analysis and diagnostics. The engine section will be a top priority, particularly since this has been the most common failure point in recent missions. SpaceX will carefully inspect each Raptor engine to ensure there are no residual issues like excessive harmonic response, fuel leakage, pressure buildup, or signs of heat-induced damage. Solutions could include reinforcing the venting and nitrogen scrubbing systems, enhancing fire suppression setups, and introducing additional structural protections if needed. 
Further up the vehicle, the fuel tank systems will also receive meticulous attention. The liquid oxygen tank on S-34 previously showed signs of instability before launch, so S-35's tanks must be scrutinized just as thoroughly, even if they've already passed cryogenic validation. The quiet month S-35 spent in Megabay 2 could well have involved extensive internal checks and upgrades to this subsystem. Regardless, real-time monitoring of these tanks will need to continue all the way through final integration and launch. Following these evaluations, S-35 will be outfitted with critical onboard systems, including the flight termination system and the payload bay installation. These components are directly linked to flight safety and mission objectives, so their integration must be done with extreme precision. In particular, the payload installation can introduce new aerodynamic or balance considerations so engineers will likely evaluate performance metrics before, during, and after this setup. When S-35 and B-14 are both fully prepared, they'll move to the launch pad for the final round of pre-launch testing. One critical step that SpaceX is expected to reinstate is the wet dress rehearsal. This full system test simulates the countdown and fuel loading process, but stops short of engine ignition. It was skipped before the last flight, but given the problems encountered, it'll likely return as a non-negotiable milestone to ensure system stability and avoid launch day scrubs. All of this underscores that, like B-14, S-35's preparation cycle is far from short, and that's just the hardware side. On top of this, SpaceX must still navigate the regulatory process for launch authorization. At present, the FAA has only closed the mishap investigation for Flight 7. The investigation for Flight 8 remains open, and while a launch is technically possible before it closes, SpaceX will still need formal approval from the FAA before proceeding. These authorizations usually follow a confirmed state of readiness, meaning they won't arrive until SpaceX has cleared most or all of its technical hurdles. So it's becoming increasingly unlikely that Flight 9 will launch within April. This means SpaceX may miss the opportunity to fly two Starship missions in two consecutive months, a feat it achieved last year with Flights 5 and 6. Moreover, the turnaround time between flights may stretch beyond the 49-day interval we saw between Flight 7 and 8. For that interval to shrink, Flight 9 would need to launch before April 24th, a date that now seems out of reach. While this may be disappointing to some, it's worth emphasizing that the extended timeline reflects SpaceX's commitment to quality and safety. Rather than rushing into another test flight, the team is taking the time needed to correct, improve, and strengthen every part of the system. And that's what matters most, a successful mission. Once SpaceX nails this launch, the pace of Starship flights will likely accelerate rapidly, perhaps even exceeding our expectations. In other words, the groundwork is being laid for a major leap forward. So let's keep the energy up and show support for the teams working behind the scenes. If you're cheering for Flight 9, drop the number 9 in the comment section down below. And if you've got a new prediction for the launch date, go ahead and share it. We're all in this countdown together. Indeed, if Flight 9 doesn't lift off in April and gets pushed to May, the delay may actually open the door to even more exciting developments, possibly turning May into the most action-packed month in Starship history. On SpaceX's side, the momentum won't stop with Flight 9. In fact, the preparation for Flight 10 is already well underway. B-16, which is designated for this mission, successfully completed its cryogenic proof test back in March. It's now essentially standing by, ready to move on to static fire testing as soon as the Flight 9 campaign clears the launch pad. Meanwhile, S-36 has likely wrapped up its production phase and is also prepared for cryogenic testing at any time. If both B-16 and S-36 continue progressing without delays and Flight 9 succeeds, there is a very real chance we could see not just one but two Starship launches in May. That would mark a historic milestone for SpaceX, achieving two full-stack Starship launches within a single calendar month for the first time. Even more thrilling is the growing anticipation that Flight 10 could be the mission where SpaceX attempts to catch a returning ship stage using Mechazilla, the massive launch and recovery system integrated into the tower. 
This would be a critical leap forward toward achieving full reusability for Starship. Supporting that vision, Launchpad B is steadily nearing readiness. The flame diverters, or flame buckets, were recently relocated, further signaling ongoing work to prepare the pad for high-stress launches and landings. The launch tower and the Mechazilla catch arms have been operational for some time and have undergone numerous tests, so confidence is building that a ship catch may be attempted soon. But what makes the coming weeks even more electrifying isn't just SpaceX's activity. It's the potential for a broader, industry-wide showdown. May could be the month when three of the most powerful players in spaceflight, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and ULA, launch within weeks or even days of one another. Starting with Blue Origin, the company is reportedly planning the second flight of New Glenn in late spring. They've completed the mishap investigation from the first mission and have begun moving key hardware, including the second stage of the next rocket. If everything stays on track, the new Glenn 2 launch could realistically take place in May. And this time, Blue Origin has its sights set on a milestone of its own. Landing the massive booster on a drone ship aiming to bring their vehicle into the reusable era. CEO Dave Limp has confirmed that the company is pushing hard for this achievement, which would directly challenge SpaceX's long-standing dominance in reusable rocket technology. Meanwhile, ULA also has an active manifest and is expected to launch one of two key national security missions. USSF-106, or 87, in the second quarter of this year. To hit that timeline, a May launch would be necessary. Importantly, this mission would mark ULA's first flight since receiving certification to conduct operational launches with the Vulcan Centaur rocket. After experiencing issues with their solid rocket motors on the last flight, this upcoming mission is critical for demonstrating improved reliability and performance. It would also show whether ULA can keep pace with SpaceX and Blue Origin in this new era of competitive high-cadence launches. Put all this together and May is shaping up to be a defining month in the modern commercial space race. For the first time, SpaceX, Blue Origin, and ULA, all recently selected by the Space Force to participate in the National Security Space Launch program, may go head-to-head -head not just in ambitions, but on the actual launch calendar. The outcomes of these flights could set the tone for future government contracts, technological direction, and industry leadership. Of course, the key to this whole timeline is Flight 9. If SpaceX pulls off a successful Flight 9, the foundation will be set not only for Flight 10, but for a dramatic acceleration of the Starship program as a whole. So if you're still waiting for Flight 9, hang in there. What lies beyond the delay may not just meet expectations, but far exceed them. SpaceX is preparing for something big, and when it arrives, the rest of the world will be watching. Will you? This has been Kevin with Great SpaceX. Don't forget to like the video and subscribe if you haven't already to stay up to date with yours truly in the latest details of SpaceX's progress. Thank you so much for tuning in, and remember, curiosity, imagination, and inspiration will always follow you as long as you keep looking up.